Greetings! Today we're going to be looking at the Darlington Pair. This is an interesting two transistor configuration. It has a couple of salient characteristics. Number one is a vastly increased beta. Number two, a doubled VBE. And number three, the R prime E will also be doubled. The Darlington Pair was invented by Sidney Darlington, who was a, an American electrical engineer in 1953. And essentially what it does is it feeds one transistor into another. And it looks something like this. We start with one transistor. And the emitter of this transistor is going to be hooked into the base of a second transistor. And the two collectors are going to be tied together like this. Now you think of this as one big transistor. So this is the base for the composite, if you will. The emitter and the collector. Now what should be immediately apparent is that you have two VBEs here. So instead of the usual 0.7 or so that you would see for a bipolar um, silicon transistor, you will see around 1.4 for the two of them. Okay. Um, the second thing that we would notice is that if we track the currents, the effective beta, transistor 1 times transistor 2, these things multiply. Now if we look at this as an input current, right, IB number 1, this produces an output current which is emitter current number one. Now, approximately, right, if we make the approximation of emitter and collector currents being the same, then emitter current one would be equal to beta times base current number one. But if we look at this diagram, we notice that the emitter current from transistor number one is going into the base of transistor number two. All right, so IE1 is IB2. Meanwhile, IB2 gets multiplied by the beta of the second transistor. So that emitter current, emitter current number two, would equal the beta of the second transistor times its input current, IB2. But IB2 is equal to IE1, which is equal to beta IB1. So therefore, the emitter current coming out of the second transistor would be the first beta times the second beta times the input current IB1. So we get this beta multiplying effect. If the two betas were identical, an easy way to remember this is that you basically are squaring beta. So we get a huge increase in the effective beta. Now it will be unlikely that the two betas would be identical, obviously. Um, beta is a function of the collector current. So even if we had two matched transistors, we still wouldn't have identical betas. But the fact of the matter is we would both um, C, both of these transistors would see uh, fairly large betas, so the composite would produce a beta in the thousands, right? We might get 5,000 or 10,000 or something like that for the effective beta. Now that's, that's great, right? With a huge beta, that's going to have an, a huge impact on the input impedance looking into the amplifier. The other thing that we will see because of the VBEs over here, there's effectively a doubling of R prime E. So the effect of R prime E is basically two times the normal R prime E, which would be 26 millivolts over IE. In other words, we could think of that as either two times 26 or just 52 millivolts divided by IE. And by IE, I am referring to the current in the second transistor. All right, so a doubling of VBE, a doubling of R prime E compared to a single transistor, and then this effective beta multiply or beta squaring if you want to look at it that way. So here's a, uh, an illustration of where this would come in handy, right? Suppose we have a source with a relatively high internal impedance. All right, let's say this is 4.7 K ohms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little um, follower using a Darlington, okay? So Here's our first transistor, here's our second transistor. Now sometimes on schematics, a Darlington is not drawn as two discrete transistors. It'll just draw one transistor there and indicate 
that it's um, sort of a super beta or uh, Darlington configuration. And we're going to need a base resistor down here. All right, so our biasing resistor, this is going to be a lot larger than what would be typical and pass work. So 220K for that. We're going to use an 8 volt power supply, DC. Now off the emitter, biasing resistor is going to be 3.3K ohms. And that's going to hook into a minus 10 volt power supply. And here's our load, right? We got a nice capacitor coupling over there. So 150 ohms. Relatively small. Okay. Now, before we go any further, if you had directly connected this source to this load, all right, like this, just okay, here's my source, it's got a 4.7k ohm internal impedance, and I'm going to hook it up to this 150 ohm load. Right, without picking up your calculator, you can see that there's going to be a huge voltage divider effect here, right? So if we chose an input of maybe, say, 100 millivolts, Right, you think of 100 millivolts back here. Well, the voltage divider is going to be 150 over 150 plus 4.7K. Right? So you're only going to get about 3% of the input signal. In other words, we're only expecting maybe somewhere in the vicinity of 3 millivolts. You know, 97 millivolts is lost internally on the generator. All right? So that's not effective. I mean, we would now need a gain of over 30 just to get back to where we started, just to get back to to the uh, original signal of 100 millivolts. Okay, so continuing, all right? Um, we'll do a little bias analysis on here. Now, it might not appear initially, but we can actually do the approximation technique on this particular circuit. In other words, we can make the approximation that the base is zero volts DC, all right? Now, you're saying, well, why? Look at the size of this thing. This is 220K compared to a 3.3K. Yes, that's true, but the beta on this thing is going to be phenomenal. All right, so let's say the beta for each of these transistors, just to keep it easy, is 100. All right, so we'll just say that beta 1 equals beta 2. All right, so the effective beta, the beta total, all right, again, we don't add them, we multiply them. So you take 100 times 100, and we're looking at 10,000 for a beta. Now, at that large of a beta, we can uh, withstand a much higher value for the base resistor as far as stability is concerned. Right? You might remember that this equation, the exact equation for this, is going to be your VEE minus the 0.7. Well, in this case, with the Darlington, that's 1.4. Okay? And then it's divided by your emitter resistor plus your base resistor divided by beta. Right? Well, now you've got a beta of 10,000. If I divide 220K by 10,000, right, we're only looking at 22 ohms, 22 compared to 3.3K. Yeah, so we can, in fact, use this um, approximation, all right? So anyway, we have zero volts uh, roughly. You know, it will be slightly negative, but we have roughly zero volts at the base. We'll lose um, the 1.4 volts, right, 0.7, 0.7. So this... Composite emitter, if you want to think of that as one transistor, is going to be approximately minus 1.4 volts DC. Okay? Now, that means that the balance, or 8.6 volts, right, from the minus 1.4 down to the minus 10, is what's going to drop across that 3.3K. Okay? So, your emitter current is 10 minus 1.4 divided by 3.3K. All right. And um, that's going to give us approximately 2.6 milliamps. All right. From that, we can figure out the R'E. Remember, that's doubled 52 millivolts over IE. So 52 millivolts divided by 2.6 is going to get us 20 ohms. All right. Okay. Now, 
as long as we're dealing with some impedances here, let's go and figure out what this um, input impedance is. So we would need to figure out first the Z in base, right? Because Z in is your biasing resistor in parallel with Z in base. Now, Z in base is in turn equal to beta times R prime E plus R E. All right. Now we have this huge value of beta. All right. So we've got 10,000 for that. I'll just say 10K there. R prime E is 20 ohms. Now what is the R E value? Well, the R E value, all right, that's the AC um, resistance that we're going to see over there. Okay. So that's basically 3.3K. Uh, in parallel with 150 ohms. All right, so that combo is going to give us just a little less than 150. That whole thing is going to be about um, 170 or so. Then you multiply it up and you wind up with a pretty large Z in base. All right, that's like 1.63 mega ohms. Mega ohms. Now your Z in would be the 220K in parallel with that 1.63 meg. All right, obviously the 220 is going to uh, dominate and we get 194k ohms out of that. Well that's a much larger value than we've seen in prior uh, examples. Okay, um, What do we wind up with with a voltage gain for this thing? Well the voltage gain for a follower right, is going to be RE or a little RL if you prefer divided by R prime E plus R E. Okay, so the, uh, the R E again is uh, this combo, 150 in parallel, 3.3K, and the R prime we know is 20. Okay, ideally, you know, we would get unity, but you know, we're a little shy on this but not too bad. That works out to about 0.88, right? So we're getting roughly 88% of the signal, all right? Now, we get 88% of the signal that comes in here, okay? Whatever's coming in here, that's what we're gonna get out here. So remember, this is non-inverting. So we have this phase in, we're gonna get that phase out. All right. Well, how much of the 100 millivolts do we actually get to the base? There is, in fact, a little bit of a voltage divider going on, just like there was back here. Okay. However, because of this very, very high input impedance, this isn't bad at all. All right, so we have our 4.7K there. Um, the input impedance we're looking at is 194K. So that divider would be 194K. Right, the thing that we're interested in, divided by the total, 4.7K plus 194K. And that is going to work out to uh, approximately 0.976. So our total gain would be the product of these two things. In other words, what we start with, 100 millivolts, all right, we get 97.6% of that at the base. So our base voltage would be the unloaded source voltage of 100 millivolts times 0.976, right, 97.6 millivolts. And then our output voltage would be this applied to the base times the gain of 0.88, okay? Um, another thing you could do is just multiply these two gains together and get a total gain, all right? So that would be 0.88 times 0.976. That's going to give us a gain of approximately 0.86. So you could just say, all right, it's 100 millivolts times 0.86. Right. Your choice. Right. You just say it's 100 millivolts times 0.86, or you say it's uh, 0.8 times the 97.6, either way. and we wind up with 86 millivolts. 
Okay, so we've lost a little bit of the signal. You know, we lost 14% of the signal. But compare that back to what we started with, right? Without the follower, we would have only gotten 3% of the signal. Okay, well, which one would you rather have? I'd certainly rather have this one. And this didn't take too much to do, right? We have two transistors in this Darlington configuration, a couple of biasing resistors, a couple of uh, coupling caps, and really not much more. All right? This would not have been possible. This nice value would not have been possible with an ordinary transistor with the sorts of biasing we've been using up to now. You wouldn't have been able to have an RB um, biasing resistor as high as 220K and still have the sort of um, stability in the DC bias that we do in this circuit, right? This is going to be a very, very stable circuit. So this all works very well. And there you have it.